Well, I strongly believed in what we were doing. I believe in the, in the wire. I believe it was a just wire. I still do. I don't. I didn't regret anything or anything. Miss, you know, it's just that now, uh, as an old man, an older man, that I see now that it was a waste. It was a waste of lives. It was a waste of hunger strikers' lives. It was a waste of all the lives, of the, the civilians' lives. So it was a waste. Well, that's we just no. We've gone from fighting a war, and and the, the path that's been taken now is more or less the, the same path taken by SDLP. So therefore, what was it all about? And if I had known for one second when I was sitting in that cell, or when I was out in the street risking my life with a rifle as a sixteen, a seventeen, and eighteen-year-old, that. I wouldn't have done it. I wouldn't have thrown stones for it. If I'd have known it was going to end like this, you know, it wasn't worth throwing a stone. And But back then we believed what we were doing. And it stands to reason who would love in their own excrement, who would take daily beatings and be starved and eat food that you knew was probably contaminated, you know, because it was times we were getting tea and you felt salty taste on it and you... He says, you know, you knew what they were doing, like you knew you were urinating and that. But why would we put ourselves through that and suffer it and suffer the humiliation of mirror searches and forced washing and stuff like that for, you know, I was in, I was on the blanket from when I was sentenced to the end. I was, I was about four years and six months, I think, you know, about four years and four months. You know, why go through all that, all them years, you know, when we still believed it and it's just that uh, that was the reasons we done it. And then we had these guys like Bobby Sands and Tom McElwee and other guys, you know. They, these guys, you no, know, they kept each other going. It was amazing. The camaraderie was amazing. The, the way that people like Bobby Sands kept the morale up through stories, through songs and poetry and stuff like that there. You know, encouraging other guys to do likewise no matter how bad they were at it, you know, and speaking Irish, learning to speak Irish. The Hitch Blocks was a one big gale talk. Even guys who had very little Irish still used it. No one, was, the, the screws couldn't cope with us. They actually brought some guy from the south and he wasn't very good to try on it. You know what I mean? They interpreted what we were saying. But the, uh, it was a privilege to be in a cell with Bobby Sands and Tom Agobie. They were different people, two totally different people. Bobby Sands was a thinker. He was somebody that inspired. He was a, a man who led from the front, like Brent Hughes. He led from the front, and as he done on the hunger strikes, and he kept up the morale of the men through stories and stuff like that and poetry, and simply as the fact that he was he was a guy that would never be broken. And Tom McElwee was a fighter, a hard man by heart, and he took no nonsense from anybody. When I was in the cell with him, we got more hidings and all off because he had, because he just used his fists all the time against the screws and uh, against the blanket early. He refused to give him a half, a full cup of tea. He only half filled the cup and Tom gave him a hiding. And then when he came back around to collect the dishes and of course, we got a hammer and flat and put on the boards and starved for a week. So it was a costly cup of tea, like, you know, I've never, probably why I drink coffee now. But uh, as I say, like, he, he was a gentleman and he, he, was, he, he was a great guy. He loved the country life and he often talked about stories, told me stories. He told me he was engaged to get married and stuff like that at his time and um, stuff like that. He was a hero worship Francis Cuse, who was his cousin. And um as I say, when he, after he went on hunger strike, before he went on hunger strike, before he left the wing, he gave me his rosary beads. I still have them. To this day, I took them through the, the prison system and stuff like that, old wooden rosary beads. And he says, That's all I have to give you. But at the end of the day he gave his life.